Hello and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Coming to you every Tuesday, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talking all things real estate, home ownership, and community related. Well, we are in week three of our four week series on title insurance and how that relates to real estate. So if you missed the first couple of episodes, you're going to want to go and tune in um, because we talked about what is title insurance, how does it work, and what happens behind the scenes throughout the real estate transaction and up to the closing. So joining me again today is Matt Hudson with First American Title. Welcome, Matt. Hi, Tracy. (laughs) Great to have you back again. Great to be here. (laughs) So we are going to continue on. um, And today we're going to talk about something that some people may not realize is that there's different ways to take title, um, to take that ownership of the property. um, And Sometimes people are surprised when they're going through the the purchase process, and uh, there's a questionnaire, right, that gets uh, that gets sent by the title company. And one of the questions on that is, "How would you like to take or hold title?" And uh, <laughs> yes, yes, uh, as uh, you know, we we talked in the in the first two episodes about what the title company does um, and what title is. So some people may not know that when it comes to real property, meaning real estate, right. uh, land, condos, uh, et cetera, that uh, you don't get like an actual certificate of title like you do with a car. There's no uh, pink slip or green slip that's, you know, you, you, that, that, that the state sends out to you. It's what's on the public record of who is in title. So there are different ways for tenancies to hold title. And... We're using the big fancy words today. Yes, tenancy. <laughs> so, so which is, uh, you know, which which can get confusing sometimes because yeah. people may think, well, I'm not a tenant, I'm an owner. Right. Well, but right. We're not talking about you being a tenant. We're talking about tenancy. So yeah. So we'll just talk about a couple different ways that the the most common ways that, right. that we're going to see uh, with an individual, meaning a. a person we're not going to talk about companies or anything sure yeah right no now. we're talking yeah we're talking yeah. residential real estate today right, yes right yeah right. so <laughs> so yeah so uh, generally uh when you want to think about ways to take title uh we want to think ahead so we're, we're looking at estate planning you know what's going to happen in the future uh most commonly if you're an individual before i was married i was a single i bought right. my house and and it just said Titles vested in or granted to Matthew Hudson, right, and, right, and and, and uh, it was my property and mine alone, and right, and uh, in title is what we call an individual, so individual in title, individual. So that's pretty straightforward. Individual, one person purchasing a property, it's in their name alone, right, right. Yeah. So, so yes. if I wanted to sign a purchase contract or a deed or a mortgage or anything, just do it by myself. Right, I don't don't need anybody else. It's just mine now. Right. Um. Now let's say. But now, but you're married, now I'm right? Married. So you and your wife decide right. you're going to purchase a property. We're so gonna, we're going to take title as uh, a married couple or husband and wife, and what that's going to mean is tenants by the entirety. So you are no longer alone. You are right. no longer an individual. <laughs> you are one. You're married. Yes. So entirely, you are entirely, it's entirely it's together. Entirely <laughs> together. Entirety, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, so. Just like the individual, now we have two people that have to sign. You know, the the, the spouses right. both would have to sign the listing contract, the purchase contract, closing documents, mortgage documents, everything. Right. Uh, and with the tenants by the entirety, uh, let's say um, if something were to happen, one of the parties were to pass, then mm-hmm. that title would transfer on to the surviving spouse, and then they would hold title individually. Right. Uh, at that time, um, and um, that's. We don't really spell out tenancy by the entirety on the deed. If we just put after the two people in title, a married couple or husband and wife, then then that indicates a tenancy by the entirety. And that it's implied. It's implied. Okay. Right. right, right. All right. So let's say you and I, Tracy, we're friends. Now yeah. we want to go in on an investment property together. Okay. All right. So there are two of us. Right. So we, d- let's say we don't answer the title company. They ask, you know, how do you want to take title? And we just say, you know, we're. Just individually. Yeah. Just, we're uh, we're going to ghost the title company. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then you're automatically going to go into title as what's called tenants in common. Okay. Uh, so with no tenancy uh, specified. Yeah. 
right. if it just if the deed just said title is granted to Tracy Woodroom and Matt Hudson, that's going to mean uh, tenants in common. And so let's say that we're looking ahead into the future and um, you know, we're not billionaires. We're not getting off this planet alive. <laughs> so um, uh, that say, um, you know, one of us was to pass, then that uh, the interest of the deceased would then have to go through probate. Uh, it would be in an in estate interest. So then in order for you to sell the property that we owned jointly, mm -hmm. um, my estate would have to sign off on that. Um, okay. And then that could that could involve, you know, it will involve the probate court, a letter of authority, um, an approval letter, you know, for, from the courts for that personal rep to sell the property. Right. Uh, um, to, to release that interest. And, and going further on to tenancy by the our tenants in common uh, we could do a percentage we could say 40 60 50 50 25 75 depending on if somebody you know put more into the property than the other then you can have a, a certain percentage but it still means that if something were to happen to one of the parties that it still it doesn't matter if the one party has 10 percent and the other has 90 right that 10 percent still needs to go through probate in order to be cleared or you know right. whatever the next steps yes, will yes, be with that yes, because yep. um and and wills won't fix it so mm -hmm. a, a will will not will not suffice uh but you would have to still go through the court you know you may say well according to the will they said uh, matt said he was going to leave this property to me well you take that will to the court because, right it's still right yeah. you can take the will but the court still has to right has to issue that has yeah. to issue that letter of authority okay and have a case number a probate case number on it um the other way uh, for most unrelated parties uh, that can hold title together is what we call joint tenants or joint tenants with full rights of survivorship. And it's exactly like it sounds, mm -hmm. joint tenants with full rights of survivorship. Um, it's an equal ownership. It's very similar to tenants by the entirety. And there are cases when this would be the, the way that people would want to go. Let's say if there's, um, you know, maybe two parties, boyfriend, girlfriend, they have an equal amount that are going into the property, they may want to do something like that. Um, let's say, Tracy, to, to use the example, if you and I bought a house together as friends and we yep. went on title as joint tenants with rights of survivorship and something were to happen to me, my wife would be really mad. <laughs> <laughs> she would be mad. <laughs> she would, you just gave away all of my rights to all of the inherited, everything to, to your co-owner. So that might be a situation where joint tenants with full rights of survivorship may not be a good idea. Um, but generally speaking, those are the, the three main ways to take, take okay. title. So the, so the distinction between joint tenants and tenants in common, because I know it always it seems always a little bit opposite of what it of what the, it the actually it is. Yes. Right. So because yes. joint tenants. Right. We buy that investment property as joint tenants and something happens to one of us. The other one, then it's all theirs. It's theirs. It, then we will revert right to an individual Correct. title and Correct. you can do whatever you want with the property but the tenants in common is where if something were to happen to one of us that investment property you know it could go it go through probate but it could potentially be passed down to our children right, right? and they could continue on with with that investment for our portion of right. the yes. ownership yes. so <laughs> yes exactly so 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 those are the the, the main ways uh, that that we can hold title there are other ways um, to to hold title if you're in a company, uh, you know, LLC, corporation, trusts, estates, etc. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, well, and you mentioned so you mentioned with a couple of these that you know it has to go through probate to get the letters of authority. Um, you know, so this would this would pertain as well to you know say you know if your parents if you you know need to sell or you know something happens to your parents they're the last one surviving and their their home their condo is, is there i've had plenty of clients that this was the situation that's one of the the pieces the the legal documentation that's needed in order for them to sell the home um on their you know on their behalf right is the letters of authority and that is just the the document from the court saying that this person has the authority or the ability to be able to transfer this real property. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. And uh, it can get pricey. It 
if you really wanted to do it, you can do it yourself. It's a little bit tedious. There are some steps involved to, to open up probate. Um, I'm not a lawyer. I, I, I wouldn't recommend doing it individually. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I hire an attorney for that. Um, we've, but, we've had a great uh, great estate attorney on here who, you know, we might have to do some more episodes with him, but definitely yeah. happy to provide a referral if you need <laughs> yes. somebody to do that for yes, you. Yes, so, yes. Very, yeah. very, a lot of qualified people that, yes. uh, yeah. that can take care of that for you. And, 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 and not just in the tenants in common, that's individually as well. So, so let's say the tenants right. in common, the, 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 the past party or, um, or husband and wife or one one spouse passes and then it's on to the next they're entitled as individual and same right. same thing as is just the individual so that right. time uh your heirs would would then have to to go through the probate if there was no mechanism in place to transfer title upon death which right we could what, do a whole different episode right yeah that would be a whole nother episode i i know what you're referring to and maybe we'll we'll add that to our idealist i know in the last episode we had uh, an idea for yet another episode so right. we'll, we'll definitely be doing another series later this year <laughs> with with matt so um but yes right so like in my case right i don't have a spouse at this time so you know, if something were to happen to me, you know, in order for even though it's in my will that my, you know, the my how my home transfers on to my children, I don't have that title mechanism in place at this time, which we do need to talk about that because I do need to put that in place. But that will automatically transfer the the title into into their names. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so then, then you're, you're yeah <laughs> you're the heirs and every yeah to take care of that. Yeah, because I feel like uh, probate can take can take some time at times. So if you can do things to shorten that process or, you know, shorten the process, because yeah. most of the time you, you, you can't get out of going through it, but you can shorten the process. Um, it's always a benefit. So right. to everyone. So, so those are, those are the, the ways that you take title. Um, anything else that we want to chat on that? Otherwise, um, um, well, well, let's talk about liens on uh, and mortgages. So, okay. you know, as we said in previous episodes uh, about, you know, mortgage title insurance. So if uh, um, if we have two owners on property, two owners have to sign a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Now, as, as I said in the prior episodes, there's the difference between credit and title. So you could have two owners to the property. One may sign the note and be financially responsible for that. But both owners would have to sign the mortgage document, and in other states they call that a deed of trust, and that's the document that gets recorded at the county to secure the lender's interest in the property. So anybody that owns the property has to acknowledge that there's and, a loan being taken out against it. And that is, uh, it, it does happen. It's rare that you have one person that is taking responsibility for the the mortgage piece of it, but that person and another person on the title so that even if you're the one financially responsible for the property, you still can't sell it unless the other person agrees as well. Okay. Person who has no financial <laughs> obligation to it at all. So, you know, that's why it is very important when you are going through this process um, to make sure I'm always big on informed decisions and, um, you know, getting good, accurate information. That's part of why we're doing these sessions as well is that we want to make sure we're getting some good information out there because it can have uh, it can have major effects on what happens after the fact. Right. Right. So. Yeah. So, well, thank you for joining us, Matt. And uh, hopefully you got some great information on different ways to, to take title and hold title. Um, so, and if you missed the first two episodes just on what is title insurance and how does the title company fit into the real estate process, then go back and watch the first couple of episodes. Next week, we are continuing on with title insurance, but this is, we're going to be talking about fraud. So there's some hot topics with that um, today. And so we want to make sure that you are aware of some of the fraud that can happen as you're going through a real estate transaction to make sure that you are not involved in that or a victim of it. So thank you for joining us, Matt. And thank you all for tuning in. And we'll see you next week on Team with Tracy. Thanks, Tracy.